Uh, in this uh, phospholipids video, <coughs> uh, we're going to be looking at uh, the structure of phospholipids, um, how they can be drawn uh, in a simple way, uh, their properties, uh, which are quite important, um, and their, their functions. Uh, we're also going to compare phospholipids with that of uh, just normal lipids as well. Okay, so um, this is um, one structure of a phosphate uh, group. Um, the important thing to get from this image really is that it is charged. Uh, in fact, it's negatively charged. Okay, uh, the the number of charges on this depend on a, on a number of things. This is just a general structure of uh, the phosphate group. Now. What happens in phospholipids is um, it still has glycerol. Um, it will have two fatty acids attached to that glycerol. But um, on the third carbon of the um, glycerol will be the phosphate uh, ion. Now, the phosphate ion is able to undergo a condensation reaction because it does actually have an OH on there. Uh, which I haven't shown in this diagram, but there is an OH, so we can actually undergo a condensation reaction and occupy um, the vacant carbon on the glycerol in, in, in place of a, uh, a fatty acid. So what this does, uh, this, this phosphate group as we call it, um, introduces some incredibly important properties uh, into a phospholipid. Uh, we're going to talk about those in a moment, but first I want to show you some cartoon or uh, general uh, ways of representing uh, a phospholipid. They're, they're diagrams that don't show any chemical detail really. Okay, so on the screen there are two ways uh, of representing a phospholipid. Uh, if we look at the one on the left, uh, this is really using rectangles um, to show the fatty acids in blue, a rectangle there to show the glycerol, and then a circle to, uh, to show the phosphate uh, group there. This is another one uh, where you just have a circle on the top. Now that would represent the glycerol um, plus the phosphate. Okay, so this is a, a more abbreviated way of showing uh, the phospholipid. Um, something similar to that, which I'll draw out for you, uh, you have a circle on the top uh, that represents the phosphate. Uh, under that we have a kind of a collar effort that would represent the glycerol. And then lastly, two wiggly lines there would represent the fatty acids. Often referred to as the fatty acid tails, of course. So there's three ways there um, to show how uh, you represent a phospholipid. There is one other way. Um, it's very similar to this one. Uh, it just uses uh, circles like this. So that would be uh, the phosphate. This then would be the glycerol and then the fatty acid tails after it. So very similar to the one I drew previously there. All right, but this is the glycerol. This one here is the, oops, is the phosphate. And then we have the fatty acid tails. Okay, so you um, will have to be able to draw phospholipids via one of these ways. You'd also have to recognize uh, these structures as well in an exam. So that's the general um, non-chemical detailed way of representing phospholipids. Um, I will be asking you in your, in your books to actually 
show how a phospholipid is represented in chemical detail, okay, which follows on really from what a triglyceride looks like in chemical detail. So that would be uh, an activity for you to do. So the last thing, uh, the last but one thing, sorry, in this video is to look at the properties of these phospholipids and what does this phosphate do to a phospholipid. So in this diagram, um, <clears throat> it's very similar to what I drew earlier, uh, except it's using sort of curved end uh, rectangles to represent the uh, parts of a phospholipid. But the important thing is, is the, the phosphate and the glycerol, this is what makes uh, the phospholipid, uh, phospholipid, sorry, hydrophilic. Okay, so this likes water. All right, um, it's often referred to as being polar. Okay, again, that just means it likes water or in fact, it can dissolve in water. Um, the fatty acids, again, are hydrophobic, as I said in my previous video, or they're non-polar. You can also refer to them as being lipid-soluble as well. So, what the important feature is in a phospholipid is it's described as being partially soluble in water. It's the polar or hydrophilic head that can dissolve in water but the fatty acids can't. And it's this dual property of a uh, phospholipid that we call amphiphilic. Okay, it just means that it has these two opposite properties. One part likes water, the other bit doesn't. What makes this dual property in phospholipids so important um, is that it is the molecule that makes up our cell membranes. And uh, if I represent that, so this is a simple phospholipid. What happens is the phospholipids form a bilayer where the polar head here in the circle uh, dissolves in the water. So there'll be water up here there'll be water down here. So the top part could be outside the cell. Uh, the da down uh, below is inside the cell. And the phospholipids form this bilayer where the phosphate heads or the polar heads dissolve in the water, but the fatty acid tails um, sort of internalize and point towards each other uh, to form this uh, hydrophobic region. Okay, and uh, this will be expanded upon when we do uh, membrane structure in detail. But that's basically how these phospholipids arrange themselves when they are completely surrounded by water. Okay, they form this bilayer. So without phospholipids, then it's unlikely that we'd have cell membranes as we know it today. Okay, so that's the important function and the important properties of a phospholipid. Now we just have to sort of compare um, a phospholipid with that of a normal triglyceride. Okay, so uh, the comparison then between lipids and, pho and phospholipids. Um, nothing too uh, technical here, um, but with uh, the lipid, uh, this is an important one. We say that it has a glycerol head, all right, but with a phospholipid, we have to take into account the phosphate. So we say it has a glycerol, spell it, a glycerol phosphate head. All right, now that's often uh, missed out, but uh, you have to word your answer like that. Um, the other 
uh, differences and similarities. I'll just dictate, really. Um, with a lipid, it will have three fatty acid tails. Uh, with a phospholipid, it will just have the two fatty acid tails. And then it would have the phosphate group on the final carbon of the glycerol. Uh, the lipid is totally insoluble in water. It's fully hydrophobic or non-polar. Um, or we can say totally lipid soluble. Uh, the phospholipid, of course, is amphiphilic. That means it is partially soluble in water. This is due to the uh, what we call the phosphate head. OK, um, the fatty acid tails will be hydrophobic and they won't dissolve uh, in water. Um, the other difference though is to do with their function. Um, I haven't mentioned any functions of lipids because I want you to find those out. But um, for this comparison, lipids um, have a lot of functions. One being um, they form the adipose tissue or the fat under the skin. Uh, they form uh, the coating around nerves called the myelin sheath. Um, the phospholipids, however, there's only one function for them, and that is to make um, cell membranes. OK, so we've had a brief uh, comparison there in terms of their structure and their uh, function. So that's the video on uh, phospholipids. Uh, you just need to do the activities now in the workbook just to make sure you understand these videos and the notes that uh, are online as well.